Now, let me ask both of you guys a question, right? Now, you both got it out the mud, got it out the dirt. It wasn't generational. Nobody gave you a million dollar loan. Nobody gave you none of that stuff, right? So now they have plans that if you make over $400,000, they tax the shit out of you. Now, think about it. This is your first time. You got it out the mud. You got family. How do y'all both feel about the fact that they're going to tax people that make $400,000 more, way more than anybody else? No comment. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with it. So when he I was, was broke, mm-hmm. right, and I started getting paid, I remember I was 26 years old and I made $100,000. And I just thought I was the shit. It was the best thing ever, man. I had $100,000. And I didn't even know what my tax rate was. And I didn't care, right? Because I knew if I kept on busting my ass, I can make more. And there's, you know, did Correct. I like how the government spent it? Not always, right? right? You know, could I... Did I argue that we government needs to be more efficient and smarter of how to spend money? To this day, I'll make that same argument. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, man, what what I got, I busted my ass, but there's a whole lot of people around me that busted their ass. And so, you know, I never really worried about tax rates. Now, you, you know, did I like writing that check? Like when I first got the big check and I was, you don't mm-hmm. even want to know how much I've written right. in, in checks. Um, did I like it? No. But I did I, did I respect it and realize that, it, you know, I contributed to other people's well-being. Yeah. And I'm I can't, you know, I can't. And I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> when you look at a company and they say that they're a billion dollar company. Right. And they pay $750 in taxes. And you look at yours and you'd be like, God damn, I paid but way me, more than that. Let me, let me just explain that. Right. Okay. Please. Not, not that I'm standing up for anybody not paying taxes. Right. But mm-hmm. what I'm saying is um, I invest in a lot of companies and not all of them are like Noel. Right. Mm-hmm. And twist it up. A lot of them go belly up. Like out of my Shark Tank companies, probably 25% of them turned out to be idiots that are just done. And so when you lose money like that, you get to write it off. Correct. And so if you, you know, in the case of big companies like Amazon, the way that they get those taxes down to zero is by investing in new research and development and new things. And so all those things that make their service better, the government encourage you to invest in those things because they keep create jobs, they create mm-hmm. new technologies, all that stuff. So if we stop encouraging those things, I think we go backwards, right? Now that said, if Jeff Bezos benefits and he puts cash in his pocket, Mm -hmm. pay more. That's when he pays, right? That's when you pay your way, right? All right, so DJ Envy threw a nice curveball at Mark Cuban. And actually, to be honest with you, Mark Cuban kind of knocked it out of the park. He didn't back up on the question. He didn't get kind of nervous. He answered it honestly and mark cuban's answer was like yeah i'm I'm with you being taxed what you think is something outrageous nobody likes that but what i liked about mark cuban is mark cuban came back and was like yo this is how he didn't really give it to you like this is how you can avoid it but he said this is how they avoid it which is we avoid it that's really what he was talking about and one of the things that he was basically saying is that billionaires and millionaires tend to take their money and reinvest it into research and development and into their company. And a lot of times they're not really taking any paychecks, any new income. They're, they're constantly taking that income and reinvesting it into the business, into things that they like and things that they see could advance them even further into the future and writing it off all at the same time. And it's easy for you to do that as well. I'm going to outline a couple of items you should be doing, and if you're not doing, you you should begin to do so that you can save money on your taxes and help to better your life and better your business all at the same time. Tip number one, invest into a 401k or a retirement fund. Most people who work a traditional job, they have the ability or the option to invest in a 401k. That's what you should be doing if you have that option. Investing in a 401k allows you to take the money that you've earned and it allows you to immediately invest it towards your retirement. And the good thing about that is that as long as you do not withdraw from that account prior to your retirement, I believe the age is around 65 to 67 years old, but as long as you don't touch that money before that time period, you never pay taxes on it. And it ensures that you're able to maintain the current lifestyle that you're living after you stop working. A lot of barbers and stylists, they don't have the option of having 401ks. So what do you do? There's something called an IRA. An IRA is an individual retirement account, and you have the ability to invest a certain amount of money per year. I believe the the limit for 2021 is about 
seven thousand dollars it's either six or seven thousand dollars but that means six to seven thousand dollars of your taxable income is now set to the side and you're no longer being taxed on that the thing is there are a lot of companies that are out there if you're not sure where to go for an individual retirement account you have fidelity you have vanguard you have charles Schwab and you have TD Ameritrade. These are some options that you have available and just go onto their website. A lot of these companies have advisors that assist you with doing that. Keep in mind that the average person needs to save 10 to 15 times their annual income in order to sustain their lifestyle after they stop making money. Since 401k contributions are pre-tax, that means the more you contribute, the more you decrease your taxable income, saving you money at the end of each year. Why not give it to yourself instead of giving it to Uncle Sam? Technique number two is to open a health savings account. It's called an HSA. It means exactly what it sounds like. It's a savings account for your health. In the event that you get sick or something happens to you and you don't have insurance, that money is there to assist you in paying off those bills tax-free. When you withdraw it, you don't pay any taxes. Now, here's another thing. Some people say, well, I already get insurance. I already have insurance through, the, through Obamacare. I don't need that. Well, okay, but do you have a deductible? If you have a deductible, those the funds in your health savings account can be used to pay off your deductible. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, along with that, you're able to use funds from your health savings account to pay for prescription medicines and things of that nature. Individuals can contribute up to $3,600 per year and families and couples can contribute up to $7,100 per year in their health savings account, thus allowing you to knock off another chunk of money from your taxable income. Technique number three, charitable contributions. I know you go to church and if you don't, I'm going to tell your mama. If you go to church and you're paying tithes and offerings on a weekly basis, when we went to church, my mama gave me my brother's $5, a dollar, whatever she had in her pocket that day, she'll give us some cash to throw in the pot. Well, that's a mistake. I don't tend to do that. When I go to church, I'm using my debit card, my credit card, or I'll write a check. And the reason why is because I want to keep a paper trail. And that ensures that every dollar that I've contributed to that church, I can write off at the end of the year as a charitable contribution or a donation to a good cause. Now, let's say you don't go to church, but you still want to take advantage of the charitable contributions. There's a lot of ways of doing that as well. You could donate food clothing, furniture, household goods, sporting goods, that just things that are laying around the house that you no longer want. Pack that stuff up, take it to the local Goodwill. They'll write it down. They'll put a value on the goods that you've given them. That ticket is your key to writing off that amount of money on your taxes at the end of the year. That is a huge way to save an additional two to $3,000 per year and clean out your house. Step number four is to claim business deductions. Now, if you don't own a business, don't have a business, open one, start one, become a consultant, figure out what you can do, cut some grass, open a lawn care. It's as easy as going to your local secretary of state, filing the articles of incorporation, going on to the IRS website and opening up and, and, and getting a EIN, which is an employer identification number and setting up a business bank account. And now once you have all those things in line, you can start depositing funds, especially I'm talking to Barbers and Stylists on this one. When, you're, when your clients pay you, instead of putting that in your personal bank account, that should be going directly into your business's bank account. Now, once it gets into your business bank account, you have opened up the door for a lot of ways to save money on taxes. Some of the common deductions that I use on a day-to-day -day basis are mileage and vehicle expenses. If I, got, if I use my car to drive to and from work, I track the miles. Vehicle expenses, what does that mean? Gas, uh, need a new tire, that's a write-off. Oil change, that's a write-off. Transmission blue, that's a write-off as well. Whatever vehicle that you're using to go to and from work as a business owner, those expenses towards that vehicle is a write-off. Insurance premiums, office supplies, credit card and loan interest, your cell phone, it's a write-off. Your internet at the house, it's a write-off too. Business meals and travel. Every time you sit down, I'm pretty sure if you're, you know, I'm pretty sure you can find something to talk about business related. And so every time you sit down and, and, and eat lunch, barbers, when you leave the barbershop to go grab you lunch in the middle of the day, guess what? 
That is a business expense. And don't be using your tip money to buy your lunch. Swipe that card. The only time you should be using your tip money is to buy things that you can't write off. If you purchase a meal or you purchase gas, you're never using cash. You're swiping your card so that you can track your expenses and you can write those things off. The next business deduction that you can use is subscriptions and memberships. If you got a gym membership, that's a write-off. Your health is important. If you're not healthy, you can't go to work. That's a, that's a good subscription or a good membership to have, and thus, you can write that off. I use Audible. When I listen to Audible audiobooks, and every time I pay that monthly fee to Amazon, I'm writing that off. That is called continuing education in the eyes of the IRS, so that is a good subscription to be written off. Whatever it is, you can use your imagination but don't forget to talk with your accountant, your CPA, whoever handles your taxes. That's who you want to confirm these items with. And if you hear a lot of no, no, no from them, I promise you, get a second opinion. Don't stay stuck on one person. Find somebody who will be able to back up what you are desiring to do and are willing and qualified to sign off on your taxes saying that they've double checked what you've put on there. Ultimately, you're still responsible, but that is a good buffer to have between you and the IRS. I hope this video helped you out a lot today. If you, if you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and stay tuned for the next one. Holla at your boy.